your case was so I believe you called me and and you had multiple cases of uh, camelanus worms and your guppies, right? They were guppies. Yeah, guppies and placos and yeah, satyrs. Yeah. yeah. Um, so uh, you were using at the time an over the counter. I think it was it was an over the counter fenbendazole, and I think it was dosed like per body weight. And um, so you did whatever dosing that they gave you on the instruction package, and uh, it wasn't working. So kind of called you called me and you said, hey, you know, I think there's, you know, you first sent me some photos and stuff like that, right? We had a discussion and all that, and I came up and saw your whole setup. And uh, yeah, in fact, they were definitely camelanus worms, but um, uh, the fenbendazole that you were using, the over-the-counter meds were, it wasn't really the proper dose, but not only that, you know, given oral medications, so the fenbendazole was an oral medication, right? They had to consume. Yeah, that was the instructions they gave for it. It was oral and it was, yeah, mix it in with their food and then throw it in the tank. And uh, I remember when we looked at the container, I saved the container for you. And remember people, this was a long time ago too. This was like two years ago now. And I still have the container actually, but yeah, the dosage, when you looked at it, you laughed, you, you were like, this, this won't kill anything. And it was an Amazon special. It was a medication you could buy on Amazon, but uh, yeah. it wasn't working. And, and we didn't know anything about medications. It was right at that time when, when uh, we had to go through a veterinary to get certain medications. And I reached right. out to you and yeah, that's why you had to come out and uh, see my setup. Now, why did you have to come out and see my setup? I know the answer, but everybody else doesn't. Right. So uh, just like with dogs and cats, you need that veterinary client patient relationship. And, you know, you, you generally you have to in order to set up that relationship, you need to, you know, check out a setup, just like if a dog's coming into the clinic, right, and you, and you do your exam on the dog and things like that. And, you know, within you need to have, you know, that's only good for about a year. And you need to renew that every year, check in the setup, see how it's going, see in terms of fish, like the biofiltration, the actual fish, uh, take do your diagnostics, you know, whatever you have to do there. Um, and it's kind of under law, you know, we can't just give medications out, right, for any reason. I mean, and specifically the levamazole too. I mean, that's for every medication, but the levamazole has its own issues, right? So in terms of, um, you know, human drugs and things like that, and they used to cut that for street drugs and and all that and you know humans that that you know consume it they can get pretty sick from it too so it's not like i can just willy-nilly you know give meds away uh but um with that that i mean if you if you had like uh you had that you know veterinary client patient relationship and, and i i saw the your camelanus firms or whatever and we diagnosed it and then you called me let's say like a couple weeks later or a month later and you send me a photo and said, hey, you know, Dr. Manessis, we, you know, I got the same issue. It's like, I don't have to drive out to see you. Like I could say, well, same thing, here's the meds, right? Yeah, uh, it's developing a relationship like you would with anything, right? Exactly, exactly. Um, and I mean, in your case specifically, uh, the fenbendazole wasn't working, right? So we, we dosed levamazole instead in the bath, so in a bath form, so, if you were to do oral medications, you kind of say, hey, you got X amount of fish in the tank. You have to dose it by weight, right? So how are you really going to weigh out a guppy? You know what I mean? And then you would basically calculate how much you're going to need for, you know, the daily intake. Um, so it's just too difficult to do it orally. So we, we dose it in a bath form. Now that would work for uh, the worms in, in, in your case. Um, and uh, you know, work pretty quick. And as long as you're kind of attacking that life cycle and and knowing why or how. Yeah, you have to. And, and there's a lot of there's a lot of responsibility for the pet owner as well. Like you can only do your part with with helping with the calamonis worms. There's a lot of work that's involved to go with it too. So um, as you prescribed to me, uh, it was an every two week cycle. We had to cycle the medication through them every two weeks, and we did it three times for a total of six weeks but the work that went in so 
what these are things I did before I even contacted you was I ripped all the all the I had a lot of live plants in the tanks. All the live plants went out and into the garbage. Just can't yeah. have it. Um, all the gravel that the worms could live in went out. I didn't put it in the garbage, but it got bleached for like a month before I rinsed it out and used it again. Mm -hmm. um, everything, everything had to be sanitary. And then every time we did it, it was like a 70% water change uh, yeah. the day after uh, administering the medication. Yeah. So, yeah, for everybody, it's it's you get a vet to help you get the medication and the dosage and tell you these things to do. But then there's a lot of work yourself. Calamont, there's no I, I was asked earlier today if there's a if there's an easy cure to Calamontus worms, and the answer is no. Uh no, I mean with the with the Camelanus species, it's like um you know they, they have this unique life cycle right i mean I, I do i know someone asked about like parasitic worms later on like we can get to that but in terms of us right now with this for your exact case you know they have this uh life cycle where they go through different hosts or they can go directly so they could kind of act both like as a they both need like an intermediate host and they could have also direct host right um and i think sometimes it's two like two intermediate hosts so mm. in that case it's difficult to treat um, and they that's why you have to kind of match that life cycle but it's not just like the life cycle of the parasite because you know at certain temperatures it could it could um, you know prolong or, or quicken that that life cycle right so I've read that it could uh, at certain temperatures it could that life cycle could almost take like a month right so you know, some people say you could treat weekly for a couple of doses. Others say like two to three weeks. I mean, I just said, you know what, you know, a nematode roundworm, you know, I, I just picked every two weeks for three doses and it, you know, it seemed like it worked and it did, it work. did work. Yeah. That's what, uh, that's what I kind of just use, you know, on a regular for now for that, for that, those cases. And it seems to work. I haven't had any, um, you know, resistance issues or anything like that. Yeah, and, and honestly, the only other way that I think, and this is me, not you talking, that you can get rid of Calamonis worms is essentially uh, uh, destroy the tank. That That's uh, it's about the only other way. They're highly, highly contagious. Any nets you use from one tank to another will, and, and that's why I took it so seriously and called you because like I, I had three tanks infected. Well, I had another 30 tanks that, that could have been infected and, and could have been a very costly affair for medications if they all got infected compared to just medicating three tanks. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it, it could have been a, it could have been a nightmare. So mm -hmm. that was, that was my, my first uh, experience with, with working with the vet. Calamonis worms. I don't know what I missed, what you were Camelanus, talking about. Calamonis. 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 Camelanus. So, <laughs> Camelanus. There you go. Yeah, I'm terrible with pronunciations. So That's why I bring dude. smart people on. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm the same way. So, I guess what uh, we were getting at is the only way I could get those medications was through a veterinarian. That was the only way I could properly cure that problem. Right. Now, uh, we're going to get to... I'm, I'm assuming parasitic worms, I'm assuming he's, he's talking about like nematodes, like roundworms and stuff. And if that's the case, they're like like 650 species of roundworms. <laughs> and they all, and, and they all, they all have different life cycles and pathogenesis and things like that. A little bit preloaded. And this is the question, that, are you struggling to have medications available from suppliers? Now, there was more to this question from, that the person who asked this question was from British Columbia. And I guess they were frustrated with, they, their veterinarians out there are actually uh, having issues with bringing in the medications that apparently they're able to uh, prescribe. Have you had any of these problems in Ontario, or are you good to go if, if you if you're if you're hired to um, see a patient and they need those medications, uh, the patient being the fish, 
they need those medications, uh, you're pretty much readily able to get them or, or is it still a problem? No, it's not really a problem. Um, we can get the medications. It's just depending on like what it is and like, uh, uh, you know, how, what, you know, what, what type of medication it is, like in what form, uh, I like to get my medications in the pure form. I mean, other fish vets who are like strict fish vets, they pro there's, there's licensed medications for them if they're they are expensive and they're large in large quantities i uh, i don't get that right i can't i can't do that so uh i usually will go to compounding pharmacy and get meds in the pure form um so it is a little bit difficult sometimes but like once you develop that relationship with you know uh the the compounding pharmacy then um you can kind of uh they can facilitate that um interesting enough I, I know you didn't have any problems getting me medication. It was actually very quick. It was it was quite quick. Um, and that was Levemisol. And you, you did, like you just said, got me pure powder, pure, pure Levemisol. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, it worked pretty quick. So I guess I guess the answer would be depending on your location, depending on where, where you live. If you live nowhere near a veterinarian, it would be hard for you to get to the vet, hard for the vet to see your fish, hard for everything if if, uh, if there's geographical issues, mm -hmm. I guess. But, mm -hmm. uh, but most vets should be able to uh, get the medications you need if, if, uh, if you guys have gone the, gone the right routes to get there. And, and even just so that they know where, where to go if they, if they do need the information, um, it starts with a phone call, right? Starts with a phone call. Call your vet, have a talk. It generally doesn't cost nothing to have a talk about the problem. Um, yeah. 